today we are be going through the process of uh, installing custom ROMs into your Nexus 6. So what I'm going to do now is to install first of all Mocky ROM onto the Nexus 6, and I'll you'll basically see how how what's the process, the step by step guide to actually do it. So let's get started. Before we start, so what we need to do now is to actually have all the needed files downloaded. I'll leave the link at the uh, description below so you can actually download all the stuff. So for Maki ROM itself, what you need to download would be uh, the TWRP uh, recovery, uh, the Maki ROM nightly package for 7.1.2 as well as the OpenGX for 7.1. Normally I use a nano one so that it's a lightweight so you can just install whatever apps that you want Google apps that you want after that So this one just includes the basic Google Play services plus some uh, contact link services and all those stuff So it's just pretty lightweight so that is my preference Or well, basically if you want a full stock package you can actually go open GFs and download the full, full stock package It's up to you So, so that, that that is the stuff that we need So make sure that you download the correct version of uh, Mocky ROM or Linux OS for your device So that um, you don't flash the wrong wrong kind of um, <clears throat> package into it and break the phone. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> okay, uh, before we start off anything, so what we need to do now is to transfer the um, custom ROM files into the internal storage so that you can do the flashing later. So what you need to do now is to charging option. So you need to actually do a transfer files option so that uh, you can actually transfer the file into the phone. Okay, as you can see now, uh, we have the internal storage within the uh, Nexus 6 itself. So what we need to do is to transfer the Mocky ROM into energy apps, two of them, and copy, and put it into the internal storage of the phone. So we'll copy this in and wait for the copy to finish. Okay, now the transfer is done and we are finished with the transfer. So what we do now is just to close off this. this. Hi all, before we get started in installing, uh, I mean like flashing custom ROM to your devices. So first of all, what we need to do is to install ADB into your computer. So what um, what ADB should you use? So uh, for me, my personal preference would be using minimal ADB and fastboot uh, because that that is uh, I don't know, it's a lightweight, it's simple to use, easy to install and stuff. So I do not need to actually download the entire Google SDK in order just to enable uh, ADB and fastboot. And the second thing is that after you have installed, I'll leave a link down below. Uh, for you to install minimal, minimal ADB and fastboot from XDA developer. So uh, bef after you have installed that, the, the one of the uh, I mean like things that you should do would be go to your advanced system settings. Look at it. It's advanced system settings, environment variables, and go to your path folder, and that is where you need to put in your minimal ADB and fastboot installation directory so that you can actually access all your ADB commands from anywhere in the command prompt. It will it'll, it'll ease up the flashing process eventually. So just remember that, right? So what you need to do now is to just close this off and we'll start the flashing process. Okay, uh, before, we, before we get started, please make sure the first thing if you are now on stock Android version, so make sure you go to your about phone. As for, as for myself, if you have actually enabled developers option, then yeah, you can you can just go in here and uh, enable USB debugging. And as well as there are, there are another options that you can go through. I think that one it's the uh, OEM unlock. Enable OEM unlock, but um, since uh, I already unlocked my phone, so the options is not here. So if you haven't actually unlocked your phone, so you you be you need to basically enable OEM unlock here, so you can unlock your phone. You can actually unlock your phone during password. But if you have done so, you can ignore this step. So in order to get to the developers option, for example, if you don't have that enabled, what you need to do is to just kill my build number for like 
six, seven times, then you should have the debugger options enabled where you can access the USB debugging portion. So once this is done, um, you can actually plug in your USB cable uh, to your laptop, uh, from, from the laptop to your phone. And if it prompts out some um, dialogue on trusting the device and stuff, you should do that so that you can get your device linked up with the computer in order to do the flashing. So uh, let us get into the process now. Okay, once you are in the, um, once you have your phone connected to the computer, so first, first of all, you will need to do a ADV devices to ensure that it's connected. So as you can see, the device is really get connected. So normally what I do is I will reboot fast boot. You can use the shortcut key to do it, but normally what my preference will, will always be using ADV to reboot, ADV reboot, boot loader. And you get rebooted into fast boot from here. So once you are in fast boot mode, if you look at your phone itself, as you can see now, we are in fast boot mode. So once you are in there, make sure that your phone is an uh, unlocked status. If your phone is unlocked status, you can proceed to the next step. If it's not, you will need to run a fast boot OEM unlock to unlock the phone. And just a precaution: if you unlock the phone, it will. It will basically uh, erase all your data and, and stuff, so please make sure you have a backup before that. Uh, once you have done with the OEM unlock and everything, then we'll proceed to the next step. So when the phone is in fast boot mode, <clears throat> what we can do now is to just check fast boot devices to ensure that this is locked. So as you can see now, we will need to navigate to the installation directory. Uh, the, I mean not installation directory, but the directory where we store all the uh, we restore the TWRP recovery. So what we can do here is to do a D, which is for Nexus 6. So you can see here, this is all the stuff that we have, right? So what you can do now is to do a flashing of recovery, right? So what you do is you do a fast boot, flash, recovery, then TWRP image. So you just press enter, and you finish flashing the recovery. So the recovery is now flashed. So what can you do now is at the fast boot, you can try to reboot the recovery. Okay, so once you have the um, recovery flash, so you can try to boot up into recovery, into recovery mode, and you just press enter. So the phone itself now will be booted into recovery mode. So if you can see now, the TWRP recovery is already there, so it's been booted into this. So just wait for the boot to finish. So normally this one, we'll just keep it as swipe to allow modification and just leave it. Okay, okay before we proceed in um, installing the firmware itself, what we need to do is do a wipe. So normally I will wipe everything except for internal storage so that um, you can actually because your your installation files inside there so you can't actually wipe into your story so you'll wipe everything since we the stock is running on android 8 and i do not want any problems after we install so normally we'll clean up everything except for the internal storage so what you need to do is just to swipe to wipe it so once you're done with that you can go back and um just go back to the main screen and do an install now so as you can see, uh, normally you will just choose your Moki ROM zip and choose your OpenGF zip. So once you are done, so you just do a flash. So you just leave it there and it will and let it finish running. This process will take a while. Just leave it there. Uh, once you once you feel a vibration on your phone, uh, you should uh, basically can check out and see whether it's already done. So you just press the power button and you can see the lock screen here, you can swipe the unlock. So as you can see now, it's, it's all flashed up complete. So normally what I do, I'll do a wipe Dolby cache again. And once it's done, you just do a reboot of your system. And uh, normally I do not install, so you just wait for the boot to finish. The first boot normally will take a while, so just be patient.
Okay, as you can see now, the Mocky ROM has been booted up. So what we need to do is just to go through the uh, standard setup, United States. Uh, I can skip it. Okay, there seems to be some glitches. We'll just do it again. Um, skip. Uh, there seems to be some issues with uh, after setting up, after flashing it, when I try to go through the setup screen. Uh, there are some issues with the setup screen itself. So uh, I put now what I'm trying is that I put in a SIM card and to see whether it will work. So after I put in a SIM card, so there's a SIM detected, but um, I'll leave it as United States. Yeah, then it's fine. So there is a problem with the, the ROM is that when you are doing it, please make you will need to bypass the setup screen with putting any SIM card in just as long as it's in it will be fine so uh, I'll key in the Wi-Fi address okay so once the um, thing is connected so it will, it will be connecting now as you can see um, there are some like differences in terms there will be some like indicator in terms of data transfer indicator on top uh, I don't know why oh, okay that's export controller just close that Checking info. I mean there are some bugs here and there for this definitely. Uh, I'll skip this for now. Uh, skip So this one I'll do a next. Uh, I don't need anything now. Not now. Skip anyway uh, Yeah, that one you can just leave it as it is. So, right, so we'll just do a next and all set. Right Okay, so let, let's just go through uh, Mocky features and Apple Privacy Card. Uh, this one I'll just leave it for now, so I'm not going to do anything. So we just start off the... Okay, this is how the Mocky ROM looks like. Um, as you can see, there's no data. My SIM is a, is a, my SIM is a fixed SIM, so we won't have any data there. So, um, as you, um, so it's pretty standard. Stuff are pretty standard. Um, if you look at it, it's um, they have exposed. Um, they have some setting stuff here. Audio FX. I think... There are some additional stuff that is available for this ROM um, but it's pretty similar to what Lineage OS is if you ask me, right? It's, it's pretty similar. So um, if you look at the settings, it's it looks pretty similar to what whatever <laughs> Lineage OS are offering. Um, that so depends on um, what, what version that you actually uh, prefer. So that is a mocky version, likely on this one. I mean, there will be some bugs here and there, but the security patch is um, it's as of September fifth. It's the latest one, and um, there are some builds and there are some stuff here, like, right? So the same thing goes if you want to enable the option, you just enable the build number and just keep on pressing, and you enable the development the, the option. So normally I'll just put it in there. Then you look for USB debugging. And just turn it on. Okay. So when you plug in the so just do an allow okay so this will enable to ensure that your PC can talk to this phone right so so this is the steps that we need to do and um, so we'll just close it off now as you can see they have a pretty similar you know pixel kind of like uh, things over here so if you press on this it comes up with the uh, multitasking bar so I don't I don't see anything that it's uh, so it's the same. I think you need to set something here in order for that to, uh, to be used. Um, besides that, there are some. Um, if you look at the Mocky updater, um, let's just wipe it up. Yeah, this one looks like a pixel launcher kind of stuff. So um, this is the Mocky Center. So Mocky Center normally is a place where you uh, download the uh, updates. If you need incremental updates um, after you have donated the donated up like 30 CNY to Mocky Center, I mean you can actually unlock the features and um, you can get incremental update. If not, normally what you can do is uh, you'll get full updates so you can choose whether it's released likely and stuff and the updates will be, um, you can refresh it and they will check so there's no updates found so if there's, but now if you are not, you didn't donate or anything you will need to download the entire uh, flash package not the incremental one so meaning you're not getting about a few hundred meg of files and just flash it that way so it's entirely up to you if you would like this ROM, you want to use it, you can actually um, need some money to support the effort for this custom ROM if not then it's up to you so one thing good about Lineage and Noki they have a display itself they have a thing called 
live display so where you can actually set automatically uh, based on your time zone and stuff so they have a temperature color set to lesser blue at night so it will be better for your eyes so you can actually set it to automatic or off day night bright or offset so it's up to you so um and other than that i think the other stuff are similar we on plug and they have a tap to wake double tap anywhere on the screen to wake device so if you on it so for example if i off it so i can just double tap on the screen to on it and this is something stock android doesn't have so which which i pretty like so this is one of the features that stock android doesn't have the live display it doesn't have as well um, and apple has it now i think ios 11 or ios 10 and um these two things i think is pretty good the um display itself to reduce the blue color during at night time as well as the tap to wake and there are some other some other stuff as well that you can actually do uh, a lot of um, what do you call that um, settings itself uh, I mean like notification controls you know battery light enable notification light enable and then you can choose like um, different LED colors and stuff so so these these are the stuff which are quite cool I think to be used other than that most of the uh, gestures they have double tap to sleep they have three, three finger screenshots this this are uh, quite useful as well for me I mean three finger screenshot is pretty useful so like, for example you can push up three finger but you need to on it first um, like just on it first uh, gesture three finger screenshots so when you're on it three three finger screenshot that needs to be done or it's just a simple one you don't need that's such a big big uh, site so uh, that is pretty cool as well and of course double tap to sleep double tap to wake uh, that is the yeah so so ultimately that that is all the um, stuff that they have gesture buttons left-handed mode and all those power and call there, there are some more like the um, volume button wait so so these are some orientation button change stuff that they have i mean other than that it's pretty close to stock there's nothing much in terms of things that have been changed so if you install gf nano version you only have play store and, and google so there's nothing else really which is clean for me so yeah that's all i have to say about the mocky rom 7.1.2 there's only one bug and if you are when you are first setting up the machine, please make sure you insert a SIM card in. It can be an inactive SIM card as long as there is a SIM, uh, and that will help to bypass the errors that you get on the setup screen itself. Uh, other than that, you guys can try it out and see, and let me know whether this ROM is good for you to use. And um, if you are interested, there's another video that I'm gonna do that is uh, flashing of Lineage OS into this Nexus 6 as well. So do subscribe if you want the updates for that and. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon. Bye.